Our countdown to kickoff coverage is continuing and we head out to San Diego with Ben Higgins of Extra Sports Radio 1360 and ABC 10. Eight and eight last year. They faced six teams this season that were over 500 from last season. What do you make of this schedule? Do you think that they could possibly slip into the playoffs this season? Well, it's a tough schedule, but everyone in the AFC West has got a tough schedule. The Broncos may have the, at least on paper, toughest schedule in all the league. So, got to play who you're going to face during the course of the season. And I think the Chargers, uh, while I don't expect it to be one of those teams that goes 13 and three, they they have enough talent that they can beat playoff teams from last year. So, you beat the teams you should beat, and then split against those tougher teams, you'll end up in the playoffs. The running backs really intrigued me, Ben, because Ryan Matthews, although he is coming back from shoulder surgery, it appears that he may be ready by possibly week one, although uh, more optimistic is what uh, many fans are thinking uh, will be a week two return. Mike Tolbert is gone, although they signed LaRon McClain, a power back from Alabama. They also have Ronnie Brown. How are they going to use all of these running backs? Well, until Ryan Matthews gets back, and I think it, it would be very optimistic to think he'll be back for week one. I think week two or even week three against Atlanta is more realistic. I think you're going to see a lot of uh, shared touches between Ronnie Brown and perhaps Curtis Brinkley, who did some nice things for the Chargers when Ryan Matthews has been hurt in the past. And then after Matthews gets back, I, I see Ronnie Brown being used more in a third down role with LaRon McClain picking up the occasional runs while he also clears blocking lanes as the fullback. Hopefully Ryan Matthews can match Mike Tolbert's touchdown dances, though. That's the only thing that I ask for. The offensive line is not stellar. If you look at the last preseason game, Charlie Whitehurst was sacked five times in two and a half quarters. You know, I, I look at a few of the names. Nick Hardwick has a concussion. Jared Gaither, uh, the left tackle, is banged up. A few other offensive linemen are banged up. Are they going to be ready by week one, or is this going to be a consistent problem throughout the season? North Turner says he hopes that they're all going to be ready. They, you know, that's not the offensive line they want to put out on the field. They had an undrafted rookie, Mike Harris, at left tackle. They had a free agent pickup who they like, and Rex Hadnot at left guard. But Tyrone Green is supposed to be the starter there, and they had another rookie, uh, Dave Mulk, starting at center for Nick Hardwick. Uh, the hope is that all will be back for the start of the regular season. And if they are, and if Jared Gaither plays as well as he did down the stretch those final five games last season after the Chargers picked him up, you know Hardwick's a, he's a solid Pro Bowl-type center. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and Tyrone Green is not Chris Dielman. That's going to be tough to replace at left guard, but he's not a bad player. They could have a decent offensive line, but uh, if they're racked by injuries, it could get a little bit ugly. Few more questions for you, Ben. You know, Norv Turner. I asked you this last season, in which the team again went eight and eight. Does he have a hold on that locker room? I mean, is is it? Should we be optimistic that he will return next season, or that he can lead this team far into the playoffs? Do the players trust him at all? I mean, I'm I'm throwing a wide array of questions at you, but we're very curious about this. The players love him. The players absolutely, almost unanimously love North Turner. So that's not the issue. The locker room, they play hard for him even after losing six in a row. Uh, you know, they rallied and finished strong for him. It's the support of the fans that he's never really totally been able to garner. And if the Chargers don't make the playoffs again for a third season, I, I don't see how he keeps his job no matter how well liked he is in the locker room or even by ownership. At some point you just you just have to make a change. But that's never really been an issue. Uh, you talk to guys there and they they want to do their best for North Turner, and they say that one of the main reasons they want to win is because they want to win for Norv, and they respect him and like him so much as their head coach. Were you, and being completely honest here, were you a little surprised that he returned this season as their head coach? Sure. I mean, anyone who follows the NFL knows that when you're disappointing, when fans are unhappy, when you've missed the playoffs two years in a row and you have a talented quarterback like Phillip Rivers that – uh, that usually is the recipe to get a coach fired. Uh, Dean Spanos, though, uh, thinks a little differently than some owners. He doesn't just necessarily cave to the pressure of, you know, the fans screaming for a change. And he likes Norv and thinks consistency. I think he looks at a team like the Pittsburgh Steelers that has, you know, just a couple of coaches over a two, three decade period and what kind of success they can have when they don't make changes over and over and over again and wants to build something like that in San Diego. So he was willing to to buck the pressure and kind of go with the unpopular move and keep the head coach. 
What about the wide receivers? Vincent Jackson is gone. He was obviously one of their best, if not the best receiver, aside from Antonio Gates, who is obviously a tight end but catches balls like a wide receiver. Eddie Royal is in there. Robert Meacham is in there. Uh, would you possibly, I wouldn't even say possibly trade, but do you think that these are two solid replacements for Vincent Jackson? Uh, they're good replacements. Uh, the fact that Antonio Gates is healthy this season, and he hasn't been the last couple of years, uh, could make an, uh, just an enormous difference in targets for Phillip Rivers. He's going to draw a lot of double coverage this year because of how good he's going to be playing, which is going to open things up for all of those guys. I think Meacham and Rivers have struggled a little bit in the preseason to get on the same page. Royal has been hurt. He's finally getting back, but he looked really good in the – OTAs in the spring workout, so the Chargers are still encouraged by Eddie Royal, even though they haven't been able to see much of it in the preseason. It was a blow to lose Vincent Brown, a second-year receiver out of San Diego State. He was really opening some eyes and, uh, you know, was looked to probably get a lot of playing time this season. Now, he broke his ankle in the second preseason game, and they're going to even keep him on the roster because they think he can be back for the second half of the season. He was going to catch a lot of passes, though, so it's going to be, it's going to be a little hard missing him for the first half of the year. Ben Higgins of Extra Sports 1360 and ABC 10 in San Diego. Ben, thank you so much for the time again. We'll talk to you soon. That's great talking to you again.